Good afternoon, everyone. Tim Tunnicliffe here on the Great Rugger Run. Day 30? I think it's day 30. Oh, my God. Uh, again, so close to the end now, and it's been a long day so far today. 21, maybe 22 miles, I think, so far, and I find myself here at Rams Rugby. Look at the state of this. It is beautiful. And as anybody that's ever watched this knows, I love a balcony that overlooks the first team pitch. And this one is a spectacular spot. Just up here, great views. Something else that's a nice touch as well is that they've made it two tiered. So if people are stood up here on this extra tier, you get a, a better view over people's heads. Well thought through Rams Rugby, good stuff. Um, okay, let's go inside and see if we can find somebody to talk to. Tell us a little bit more about what's going on here at Rams Rugby. Just in oh, move that out of the way, hang on a second. Here we go. Lovely, fresh looking, beautiful new clubhouse. Now then, now then, where can we, here we go. There's uh, it's Chris, how are you doing Chris? All good, all good. Good, what's your, uh, what's your full name and what do you do here uh, at Rams Rugby? Chris Stillman, um, lead coach for the under 12s, um, formerly minis manager, club coaching coordinator, club referee coordinator, minis tour manager for this season. And I've been known to rake the grass on the first team pitch as well. So Apart from it, that, that's it. So, so not, nothing not too much. Really. Yeah. No, I'll be any time spent here. <laughs> uh, and how long have you been involved in the club? Um, since I brought my youngest lad up into the under sixes, which must have been six years ago. Okay. So yeah. Wow, you've done I, a lot in six years. Yeah, yeah. I forget to say no quickly <laughs> enough. Yeah. Um, I knew the club slightly before. An ex colleague used to bring us up here for a, for a work lunch every now and then. But um, but yeah. Um, main mainly involvement um, with the mini section and oh. I'm, playing for the fives as well. Yeah, and let's talk about that now, actually. Okay. Because um, you mentioned earlier that maybe if you turned up training, then you might get a game for the fives, but how, how does it work exactly? So, first thing I was told was, having not played rugby for 20 years, I played a Boxing Day game that we have here every year, minis, coaches and dads versus juniors, coaches and dads, and I got smashed to pieces, but loved it. Um, and I said to somebody, I'd like to start playing again. If I turn up for training, will I get a game for the fifths? And I said, if you turn up for training, that's probably a bit much for the fifths. Um, but basically, if you can either run or catch, you'll get a game for the fifths. If you can do both, you'll be a star, was what I was told. So, yes, yeah, so I started playing again six years ago, and, um, yeah, yeah, it's been good. Yeah, injured every other game, but good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but keeps you on your toes. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Good stuff. So let's talk a little bit about the room we're in now, because I yeah. understand it's relatively recently you had a bit of a, a refurb or an extension. Yeah, so I'm trying to think how long ago. It must have been about six years, I think, that... So if we were stirred, this would have in the edge of the old clubhouse here and if we were stood here we'd have been on a balcony which was perfectly safe and secure it didn't always feel that way but it was perfectly safe and secure so you'd have a crowd of people on here watching the first team on the pitch over there and then um, I think the decision was made really with a few things in mind wanted to get a ladies team started needed more changing rooms available for it so downstairs big extension we've now got six changing rooms downstairs we've got segregated areas for the referees and ladies referees as well so they've got their own space and then we got this this amazing event space um, and the balcony outside which you've obviously seen already um, so this is great for the christmas parties for the pre-match lunches with the first team often 120 130 people i think will be sat, sat down for lunch here same kitchen space that we had previously, but the, um, I'd say the quality of the food, I am told, reliably, I've eaten it, I know it's good, but it's gone up a level from where it used to be, proper chefs coming in, making proper food. And yeah, it's good. It's, it's, it's a really good day. Often do, or my firm does a sponsored uh, match day lunch here once a season. And it's good, yeah. And it's great in the summer because the doors all open up and it all becomes one big space. And Yeah, amazing. Tell me about uh, the, what it's like to be on the balcony. On a, like an, I'm thinking an early season game when it's still sunny and warm. When it's still kind of sunny stuff. and you've got the sun on that side of the pitch as well. So you're bathed in sunshine here and you know, caps and sunglasses to the four sit out on the balcony. And it'll be, it'll be three or four people deep at the, uh, at the balcony out there. Um, and you've got a little step there. So it's kind of get the short people to the front so everyone can have a little view. And you know, you've almost got like terracing built in with the steps. But it'll be, yeah, it'll be heaving out there. It's a great atmosphere. And then down outside the, uh, off the balcony, right by the first team pitch, this little corner down here, it gets properly raucous down there. Yeah. It always gets properly raucous. Is, that, is there a little outside bar there, did I spot? Yeah, just so we've got the yeah. Ram Shack, which is just, uh, just down that side of the balcony, which is fully equipped, and they've got all the beers down there. It's got proper bar set up, so you've got, you know, everything you could want down there. And the food is served down there as well. 
And as often as not, they'll get a barbecue going outside as well. So it's a, it's a really good setup. And they'll invite local firms will come in as well. There's a local pie company will come bring their pies up, which served outside. There's a local brewery who are on the same industrial park as, as Duncan Lynch, one of the key sponsors. Um, Siren Craft Brew will come down here and they'll have a little bar outside as well. Um, yeah, it's a great atmosphere. Really good stuff. Nice. Okay, let's take a walk after yeah, you. Let's yeah, go yeah. first. And we'll, um, we'll go and see a few more things. We'll have a wander outside. Yeah. But on the way down, on we're, the way gonna, down. we're gonna look yeah. at this remarkable piece of art, which I absolutely love. Let's just get a little bit of picture of that. There we go. If you could just describe it as well, please, Chris. Yeah, so we've got a little plaque up here which gives some details, but the, the artist who did this is actually the, the father of uh, one of the first team players, Ben Henderson, who's a uh, first team hooker, has been with the club for, for many, many years. And his, um, his father's an artist and came up with this absolutely incredible piece. And some, uh, some prints of it were done as well, which were available, might even still be available to buy, but yeah, Alan Henderson is, is Ben's dad, put this together. Um, front row Rams, obviously great little mix, his son plays in the front row as well, so all the references are there, it's fantastic. And it is, yeah, it's a lovely piece for people to come up the stairs as they're coming to the club for the first time to see that. It's, um, yeah, absolute class. Yeah, I mean, I think my exact word was, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. absolutely, yeah, yeah, and it is, it is superb, yeah. Um, yeah very lucky to have it, yeah. Yeah, it's a great piece. Okay, yeah. let's wander down. Carry on down. Down the stairs. Here we go, look at it. There it is behind us. <laughs> it literally <laughs> greets you as you're coming up into the clubhouse. Oh, we've got the Rams mosaic as well. Oh, we, oh, oh I didn't spot that earlier. Okay. Yeah, I don't know, I'll be honest and say I don't know a huge amount of detail of it apart from it. It looks absolutely beautiful. It does look beautiful. Yeah, Very yeah. sparkly as well. Yeah, it is. Indeed it is. It is. Um, yeah. Very yeah. arty club. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't always expect that around. No, it's, it's nice no. to see. Absolutely. So let's take a wander outside. And there we go. This is a raucous corner you were talking about a minute ago. This, it gets lively down here, yeah. And off, yeah, we've, we've got a pretty powerful pack. We're pretty much always playing this way in the second half. We've had a few games. In fact, we had one game. Which one was it last year? I think with six minutes to go, we were 12 points down and two penalty tries in the last five minutes from scrums just over there it was quite lively just here the, yeah. the crowd like it yeah okay it so you have to the powerful pack there let's go and find out where that pack gains all its strength yeah, from absolutely yeah yeah We've, um, there's been a lot going on in the club there's a lot of new things have gone up and it would have been a close season before last that uh, that we put in a marquee semi-permanent building so no planning issues to worry about <laughs> just over here which may be oh yeah some of the players in there Oh, that looks awesome. So, that was just our COVID safe outdoor dining area. Right, eh? This is the gym in here. We probably shouldn't go in because we'll drag mud in there, but we can certainly have a look. We'll, we'll have a look through the door. Yeah, we've got one of, our, it's one of our strength and conditioning coaches. You're on video. And we've got Catherine Ault, who's on the exec there. There's one of our strength and conditioning coaches on the rope. But, um... Can we come in and have a walk around? <laughs> can we have a little wander around? <laughs> Do it. Let's do it. So, uh, 22 so far. Yeah. Yeah. So this looks like a remarkable space. Um, so yeah. So, um, so before this went in, how big was the previous gym, Kath? The previous gym would have been inside the clubhouse was what, five metres by four metres? Yeah. 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 Not, not very big. And now we've got this with the branding. Yeah. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, what a, space? What and marketing team are pretty strong on the brand, it's fair yeah. to say. Yeah. Uh, and um, I mean, you may not be the person to ask, but what's this? Do you know what? I have no idea. I would like to think there's some sort of punishment element involved with the dartboard. Can anyone explain the dartboard? Oh, <laughs> that was a first team social. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> it was in the clubhouse. Right, okay. And somebody ended up with darts in their head. In their head? In their head. Is it, is it? Okay, I'm not sure if you heard that, but this was to do with a first team social, nothing to do with gym, for example. I mean, I was thinking maybe you throw a dart and then you'd have to do whatever yeah, yeah. number of press ups or if whatever. You get, if you get a one, it's burpees or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The worse but no, you get, the more it horrible social. it is. It was a social thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's Excellent. Um, let's wander around. Um, so. Uh, so, yeah, let's go and sit in the stand, shall we? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. back view of the second and third pitches off that way as we go lovely mini's training area as well 
300 minis or so on a Sunday morning down here. That's great numbers. 300 is a, is a you know, very full section, that. Oh, yeah. yeah, growing all the time. Some, we're doing something right. They seem to keep telling friends, and more of them keep turning up. And the first team pitch with our shiny new stand, which... See, what I should do is drag you down here to my sign, shouldn't I? You should. should we keep walking? <laughs> Let's just keep walking for no reason whatsoever. Um, so shiny new stand that only went in this summer. Um, put in by one of the uh, one of the key sponsors of the club, um, Duncan Lynch Precision Engineering, who did uh, the, the majority of the work on it. Um, we talked earlier on about it, but you see the echoing of the, the I mentioned the marketing team, they are on point. I just left a pint, that's a nice touch. Is that for me? Yeah, if you like. <laughs> I would like to swear to how fresh it is, but um, and some minis of lesson kit as well. Oh, look, there's my sign there. Look, oh. We've just gone past oh, it. Oh, well, let's come so, back. Let's come back a bit. Yeah, yeah. Let's come back. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's reverse. The, the wait, wait. Point there we go, let's just stand my... here. There we go, perfect, that's good. Yeah, that, that works for the sponsor. But yeah, so Duncan Lynch put this up in the summer and it is great. We came in for some of the pre-season games in the sunshine, it's awesome. But because the sun's always on that side during the summer, frankly, to be honest, sat here and absolutely melted. It was, it was fantastic. Um, and the pitch is immaculate these days. There's a hell of a lot of work goes in. We've got a volunteer force every Friday, the Friday club who come down and do a hell of a lot of work. They'll do a lot of the work around the ground, some of the... Some of the basic stuff around the pitches, but a hell of a lot of money gets pulled into it to make sure we've got pitches all year round. Because we've got a big mini section, we've got a big junior section, we've got five men's teams, we've got a ladies' teams. The ground gets a kick in, so it needs a lot of work. So, so who's, of who's involved in that Friday gang? Uh, a lot of the um, older retired um, members of the club, ex-players, guys, you know, guys in their 60s, 70s who just say, yeah, I'll come down. And they do all sorts, repairing, you know, holes in the car park. Um, I've been down here with them raking up grass where they've... They've cut the grass and needed raking up for a first team game. They come down and you know we've had guys here doing all sorts, you know, clearing snow and yeah, they're a really, really great bunch, really good bunch. Um, and it looks immaculate. And there's a lot of work goes in the marketing team. Mention them again, but you see the colour scheme around the back. Courtier is another one of the major sponsors of the club. Um, Gary Reynolds, um, Kathy, we just met. Uh, they're all around that side, and it just looks awesome. It looks the part, and it's all echoed. You can see so my replica minis kit. Dark blue and red, which you can see up there. We've got the light blue as well. And you can just about see on the posts, maybe, the dark blue and the light blue on the posts, which I'm told... I hope I'm not wrong, but I'm told <laughs> it's to do with... Let's pretend uh, it's right. Yeah, even absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the club was originally old Reading Enzians. It was a club for the old boys of the Reading School, which is the old Reading Enzians uh, Association. And when they go off to university, some of them go to Oxford, some go to Cambridge, light blue, dark blue, and they come back. And it was, it was an element of uniting them, bringing them back to a club. And, you know, uh, graduates from, from Oxbridge could, uh, could come back and play at their home club and, and have an, uh, an echo of the colours there. And that's, that kind of works through. We see it on the sleeve again here, the dark blue, light blue and the red. So it's really pulling it all together for, you, uh, for when we're a global brand. I've got to say, <laughs> when I came in... Uh, my immediate uh, thought was, wow, this, this looks great. Like, mm. it looks like there's been some thought gone into everything that's happened here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, yeah. It's, and it's obviously no accident. So, um, yeah, it's working. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, it is working. And we're growing as a club at pretty much every level. More and more, uh, more and more players coming in at every level. More and more difficult for the likes of me to get a game for the fours. I just have to put up with fists, but that's probably <laughs> where I belong. Um, and the mini section is growing. The junior section is growing. The girls section is growing as well. Um, yeah. The club, the club's in touch with the club's in, in yeah. very good health. All of which continue. are represented on the back of this stand. Yeah, absolutely. Well, if we yeah, let's yeah, take a wander around and have a look. We'll leave that point there. Yeah, absolutely. I think <laughs> we might come back to it. Yeah, you never know. Oh. So yeah, we've got we've got out the back the, the, the back of the stand here. The key thing to the club is it's a community club and it's, you know, it's a club, club for the members and for all, all elements of the community. And you can see as we look along here, you've got some of the VPs are on here. We've got minis. We've got the ladies section. We've got some juniors up here. Colts, first team and senior squad. There's some of the more the, the social rugby, should we call it, third, fourth players that are showing down there. And that's, that's a really, we talk about the Ramily. Do you really? Um, so you'll find that that's... hashtag dotted around. The Ramily, where it is... <laughs> We love it. We want it to be a community <laughs> club. We want everyone to be involved. We want, you know, from, from you know, there's five year olds that are in the mini section, five through to 105, but everyone's involved. Everyone can be as involved as, as they want to be. Um, 
And it's a good, it's a good atmosphere. It's a good family club. It's friendly. Yeah, good stuff. Let's yeah. keep walking. Let's go over to, um, let's head over towards the Ramshack for, yeah, for a second. Yeah. Um, so uh, I think I, um, it's good to see that, you know, obviously there's a lot of ambition here in terms of where you want the club to be, but it's great to see that you are still serving the whole community as well. Yeah, I think, um, so what, we're currently sat third in National One. Um, the the abortive 19-20 uh, season that was obviously cut short because of the pandemic. Once the uh, the league had done their calculations, they, they put us in at second place, which was the first season in National One, which was an incredible achievement, especially as we've still got players playing in the first team who come through the mini section here. They're playing incredibly high level rugby, but they come right through the club. And there's a lot of, uh, a lot of even if they're not, not from the club originally, there's a lot of local lads that play play in the, uh, in the first team in the senior squad. Um, and they, there's a lot of other things that go on with the first team. So every home game, one of the mini sections will be guard of honour. When the players come out, we'll have the mini. So it might be, it might be my age group, might be the under 12s who are getting to the point where they're a bit too cool for it. But, <laughs> but yet the under sixes will be stood out there. They'll wave the players onto the pitch. And then at half time, they'll do a little demonstration game out on the pitch in front of the crowd, which is awesome for them, absolutely yeah. superb. Um, and we'll get the first team, well, the senior squad, because it's a big squad. Um, they'll come down and help out three, four times a season with the mini section, come down and do some coaching with them, which is great because, you know, these kids are bloody heroes on the pitch out there and then suddenly they're coming and training with them. It's absolutely superb. So, yeah, that, that Ramley thing, that does, that does really yeah, mean a lot. Um, and we're getting good numbers down here, which is one of the reasons that we've got this here because the bar inside struggling to serve everyone. Yeah, I mean, if you've got to go upstairs to get a beer... It's a bit just, of a long way. just slows you down. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely, yeah. Um, OK, one last thing that yeah. I think we should definitely feature um, is this section over here, which is... Yeah, it's bizarre, isn't it? We walked all the way around... Oh, there we go. We're back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, sorry. So this is the disabled viewing area. Yeah. Um, and, yeah... All right, OK, there we go. Back on. Yeah. Until we just keep talking. Keep we talking. Right, we're back. Um, so yeah, this is one of the things that's gone in with the, with the new stand going in. Um, important for us to include everyone as far as we can, and we've you know we've as a club we've had um, we've had direct experience of a player being injured and, and being left with a life changing injury a number of years back, and I think that really really focuses the mind as a club that to be inclusive, to be aware of these things, and off the back of that, the Injured Players Foundation who did a huge amount of work with uh, with the lady who suffered that injury. And as a club, there's been a lot of fundraising that's gone around it. And yeah, so it's important. It's, you know, everyone should be rugby should be available to everyone as far as possible. Yeah. Um, and that's that's yeah, that's an important thing to us. It's yeah, for the community, it's the rugby community, the wider community is vitally important. Yeah, excellent, good stuff. Now, you've uh, been good enough to come running with me today so yeah, far. Yeah. Can you just explain to everybody exactly how slowly I'm I'm running at the moment? Perfectly, perfectly good pace. I wouldn't <laughs> complain if you were going any faster. I wouldn't be keeping up with you. Um, no, for a man. <laughs> For a man who'd already done 20 miles before I started running with you two miles ago, you're moving perfectly well. It's ludicrous, to be honest, yeah. And um, and what, you've got another, what, seven eight, and a half miles, yeah, eight miles like into Henley? So, yeah, I'll, I'll do four of them uh, I'll do four of them to Wargrave with you and then I'll turn around and come back because <laughs> eight's going to be about my limit uh, on my leg, I'm afraid. But, yeah, fair play uh, to have done as much distance as you had, as regularly as you have over so many days. And, frankly, to have done 20 miles a day and to still be on your feet. Still yeah. able to talk as well. It's yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah fair play. <laughs> okay, uh, Chris, thank you very much. No problem at all. I'm going to Pleasure. finish this video off and then we'll get running again. Uh, so there we go. That's Rams. Uh, it's a yeah, it's a lovely setup here. Um, it looks like a great place to play rugby, and like, I just like the way the pitch. It, like it looks like a proper rugby pitch. You know, it's got it looks, you know, it looks earthy and nice. I like it. Um, so I am on my way to Henley Rugby Club now. Oh God, seven miles, seven and a half. Not quite sure how much longer, um, but I'm going to be speaking to some nice people there. Don't forget, this whole thing is all about mental health, raising awareness for mental health issues um, and hopefully a few quid as well. So anything you can do to help share this message, help get, get the, um, this content out there to more people just really helps. So if you can, really appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye.